to start the video. Uh -huh. Yes, great. I can see you now. In HKUSD ECE department, I'm the host for today's EDSSE online seminar. So welcome to this second EDSSE online seminar. In this difficult time, many offline conferences and uh, workshops are postponed or canceled due to COVID-19. So we are striving to continue our knowledge sharing in our community. That's the reason we have this online seminar. Today, I'm very glad to have Dr. Yong Hui Fan to give this online seminar. Dr. Fan received his PhD degree from UC Berkeley in 1997. He conducted research at MIT as a visiting scholar on semiconducting materials and manufacturing. He then worked in semiconductor industry in US for 20 years. He has held different positions in various functions, such as applications, marketing, research and development, production and technology management. He's now the chief scientist at the Innovation Center of Advanced Devices for Future Communication in Shenzhen, China. He's also a visiting professor at the Institute of Microelectronics, Shama University, China. So today he will talk about the technology trend and the market, market opportunity of 5G industry in China. So without further delay, let's welcome him to give the presentation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Xiao. Hello, everyone. Today, uh, I'm very happy to be here to talk about uh, 5G uh, in China. My name is uh, uh, Yonghui Fan, and I currently work at the uh, Innovation Center of uh, Advanced Devices for Future Communication in Shenzhen, China. This is uh, what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first, I will give a very uh, brief introduction to uh, 5G and the uh, overall industry supply chain uh, in China. Uh, next, I'll talk about the, uh, the current status of uh, 5G RF devices because uh, this is actually the uh, weak area in China uh, on the, um, in the uh, 5G industrial chain. And finally, I'll talk about the uh, technology trend and the market opportunities. First, what is 5G? It stands for the fifth uh, generation uh, mobile communication. About 40 years ago, we started to have um, mobile communication. It was uh, 1G. And uh, uh, that time we can use uh, a cell phone to talk to other people. Then it was uh, the 2G, we could send short messages. And then there was a 3G that we actually could get onto the uh, internet, which is a very big deal because uh, we could surf the web uh, from our own uh, mobile devices. And then it's the 4G, and it's something we're all very familiar with, right? So we can do a lot of things um, from our cell phones and the other uh, mobile devices. Now it's um, 5G. 5G is not just the smartphones. It's uh, gonna be many, many more devices connected uh, on the network. So it's a smart society. It's just uh, so many things uh, that will be uh, different uh, than 4G. So people say that 4G has uh, changed our life, but 5G is gonna change the society. That's uh, um, why like, the 5G is so hot everywhere in the world, especially in China. Okay, what is uh, good about 5G? So these are the uh, three breakthroughs um, of, uh, of 5G. The first advance is called the uh, EMBB, standing for uh, Enhanced Mobile uh, Broadband. Simply put, it just says the data rate, the speed is gonna be much higher. It's gonna be uh, increased from uh, about one gigabytes per second for 4G to 20 bytes per second for uh, uh, 5G. So when we do things, when we download a movie or play video games, so they, uh, it's gonna be anywhere between 10 
and 100 times uh, faster, depending on uh, what we're doing and uh, where we are. So this is the EMBB. The second thing is uh, called uh, MMTC. MMTC means uh, Massive Machine Type Communication. It's just uh, uh, saying that many more devices will be uh, connected on the network. So right now, the density is about uh, 100K per um, square kilometers. And for 5G, it's going to be increased 10 times. It will be about 1 million devices per square uh, kilometers. So this is the uh, MMTC. And the third defines is um, UL, U-R-L-L-C. It stands for Ultra Reliability uh, No Latency Communication. It just says that the, the delay time in the communication will be much shorter. So you send me a signal. It takes some time for me to receive it, right? It's usually takes about like, say for 4G, it's about 10 milliseconds. For 5G, it's gonna be uh, reduced to one millisecond. So it's uh, gonna be a much uh, a shorter, shorter delay. So with uh, these three advances, so we will be able to do a lot of things that we could not do it before. For example, we can have like 3D video, we're gonna have uh, like a, a 4K, 8K TV, and a cloud office, and the drones and the autom autonomous uh, driving. Also, we will have an AR, VR, smart home, smart city, and also like uh, mobile medicine and the intellectual uh, automation. So there's just so many more things we could do uh, with uh, 5G. <clears throat> uh, in terms of um, uh, market or business opportunities, I'm not sure uh, you have heard the term uh, new inf infrastructure construction. So in the new construction, the term that's uh, right now kind of the buzzword in China. That <clears throat> it's a China in China, the government is pushing for a new infrastructure com, uh, construction. Traditionally, uh, the uh, infrastructure refers to like highways and uh, airports and the bridges and buildings and uh, office buildings and the railway. Uh, this is a traditional infrastructure. But the new infrastructure is uh, mostly digital and it's going to be um, the 5G network will be the key. And everything else, like a data center, AI, uh, Internet of Things, will be built on or around the uh, uh, 5G uh, network. So um, the, um, the, um, the output, the uh, direct or indirect output from the 5G industry will be uh, just huge. For example, it's going to be about 500 billion and 1.2 trillion this year um, for the uh, direct or indirect outputs. It will increase to like 6 trillion and 10 trillion um, 10 years from now. How much is 10 trillion? Any, any ideas? Well, the um, the total GDP of China right now, like last year, is um, 100 trillion RMB. So 10 trillion, 10 trillion is 10% of the total GDP. So that's uh, huge, right? So the 5G, the 5G industry is gonna be the driving force for the economy for the next 10 years in China. So is that the annual growth rate is going to be 24, 29. So what's better than this? So this is going to be a huge market, huge uh, um, opportunity uh, for us uh, in the 5G industry in China. And now let's take a look at the um, overall 5G industry uh, supply chain. We usually divide the supply chain into like three sectors or three groups. It's called the upstream, midstream, and the downstream. In the upstream, it's the um, 
it's basically what I just said is the um, construction of the uh, 5G uh, network. So it includes the, uh, uh, the very basic material, the equipment to make the uh, uh, semiconductor uh, chips, especially also the, like including the uh, um, regular IC and uh, the RF devices. And then it's the communication equipment, it's the base station and the core network and the care network. So this is the upstream. Then it's the, it's the middle stream. The middle stream is just the, the carriers and the uh, service providers. And in China, we have four uh, uh, big companies uh, in this area. It's China Mobile, China Unicom, China Telecom, and then uh, China Radio and the uh, Panda and the Tele Television. So these are the four uh, major uh, players uh, in the uh, midstream of the uh, supply chain. And then the downstream. Downstream is uh, the uh, consumer application and the um, commercial and the industrial applications. Consumer is just uh, like uh, our uh, smartphones and the devices and also uh, uh, smart appliances, everything we use uh, uh, in our homes. And then there's the commercial and the industrial applications like uh, smart city, internet of things and uh, industrial automation and everything, many, many more applications. So this is the uh, overall 5G uh, supply chain. We know that China is actually doing very good, doing very well um, in, the, in the overall 5G supply chain especially in the downstream and the middle stream of the uh, supply chain. China is leading in a lot of uh, area and people here are actually uh, very proud of the, um, the leading status. Uh, but there's still some area that China is uh, weak, uh, especially uh, in the uh, middle stream. In the middle stream, for the uh, like a base station, like uh, there's also a lot of uh, excellent companies like Huawei and uh, ZTE. They're also very good, but uh, uh, it's weak in the area of materials and uh, equipment to make the um, uh, RF devices. So this is an area that China is uh, still uh, uh, very weak. Probably this is the uh, the uh, acting. This is what we are commissioned to uh, do in China. So this one is just a, a more detailed look of the um, 5G industry supply chain in China. So what do we see here? We see that many uh, companies with their names uh, in Chinese, right? That means in those area, uh, China has companies that are either needing or having enough um, sufficient uh, supply capabilities to meet the uh, market demand in China. But a few places, like here, there are a few places that we see that the company names are in uh, English. For example, there's uh, one area, it's like uh, uh, says module uh, IC chips, the company names like a TI, ADI, IDT, right? So this is uh, the area um, that China is still kind of uh, nagging. And the other one here is the uh, RF uh, devices. And uh, every company name is in uh, English. It's like Covo, Skyworks, Broadcom, NXP, and uh, uh, Infineon. These are all uh, US and uh, European companies. So in this area, uh, China is almost uh, Empathy. So this is the kind of the weakest area uh, in the uh, overall uh, 5G supply chain. So this is the overall introduction to 5G and the supply chain. And we now know that uh, China is overall is, uh, is needing, but uh, there's uh, one area that uh, China is still weak. So this is uh, what I'm gonna focus next. It's gonna talk about the current status of the 5G uh, RF uh, uh, devices because this is the uh, the weak area uh, in China. Uh, first, I would like to give uh, 
brief introduction to the RF systems. The RF systems include like the, the baseband and the transceiver. Then on the other end is the uh, antenna. Right? Between transceiver and the antenna, it's called RF front end, is RF FE devices. And it includes uh, the uh, PA, which is the uh, power amplifier. And the LNA is no noise amplifier. It's just the power amplifier in the uh, receiver uh, channel. Then there's a filter and uh, uh, switches. So there's four major devices uh, in the um, RF front end module. So this is the uh, kind of a, a, the uh, system our system uh, for communication. This system, this RF system, actually uh, is in every single mobile phone or base station. So this is the, the whole thing here exists in uh, every single uh, cell phone or base station. And uh, the power amplifier is usually the uh, critical part because um, it actually determines the quantity of the signal and also the, uh, the power consumption of the system. And then uh, a filter or duplexer is actually the largest market or the market of uh, highest growth. And then antenna is also a very a critical part because there's just so many um, development going on well, when we go to uh, 5G, especially when we go to uh, millimeter wave uh, 5G application, there's just so many things going on for antenna. To find out the status of um, the uh, RF uh, systems and uh, as each of the uh, devices in the system, we actually have um, conducted a survey in China to determine the status of each of those uh, components. The conclusion is basically what I said, is just China is, is needing in the upstream and downstream by the week for uh, materials and uh, RF uh, devices. Specifically uh, for, uh, for sub six uh, gigahertz for this uh, frequency range, the problem is uh, materials and the processing uh, technologies. Actually, uh, in China, there are um, quite a few companies that were started uh, five, six years ago to make the uh, RF devices. It's mostly the, uh, the uh, compound semiconductor uh, manufacturing uh, capability. There's quite a few of them, but they have made a lot of progress in the, uh, in the past uh, few years. But um, so far, it's not yet for uh, mass production yet, so because of the no yield and the no uh, volume. So in this case, in this area, there's still insufficient supply ability. So the market share is like a very minimum, maybe just a few percent. And uh, in the millimeter wave uh, frequency range, the actually the is even weaker. There's uh, basically in both design and manufacturing, there is no um, such uh, capability exist for uh, commercial use. That may, may be some, uh, something uh, better for uh, military use, but commercially, there's still not uh, enough um, capability. I want to use the cell phone as an example to show the uh, status of the uh, key devices. This is a very uh, typical phone, the cell phone uh, in China. So um, on the left side, this, this the important um, modules like the, this is the on the on the, the top one is a uh, memory module, is from a uh, Micron, a US, a US company, and then there's the audio decoder is um, uh, Huawei made, and then here on the bottom there's uh, one memory module which is from uh, Hynix, a Korea company, and the SOC, the Kirin 980 SOC. The, very powerful, is actually made by uh, Huawei. Okay, on the right side, we see two transceivers. They are both made by uh, Huawei, but there are two RFFE modules here. 
these are uh, the two modules that are uh, made by youth companies. One is Kofo, one is uh, Skyworks. These are the two uh, dominating uh, companies in RF uh, front end uh, devices. So I actually called this a real short snap because uh, for other modules, we can probably uh, either have it from China companies or we can probably get it from Taiwan, Korea, or Japan. But for RF front end modules, and the um, owning supply is actually still the US companies. This uh, is the uh, current market players in uh, RF uh, front end uh, devices. So the current market, the current market size is about um, 180. Uh, so it's about 18, about 18 billion US dollars. So it's 18 billion US dollars. This is the total market size for uh, RF front end devices. And um, owning a few companies are dominating here. As I mentioned briefly, the the filter segment is actually the largest market. And we can see from here, the first two columns here, the first column is a SAR filter, and the second column here is called bow filter. I will explain uh, in more details later. So the filter accounts for about 50% of the uh, market share. And for the uh, SAR filter, it's um, mostly uh, Japanese companies, is Murata, TDK, Tayo Yuden, and there's one company, this is a Skyworks. Skyworks is actually a US company, but because it bought a Japanese company a few years ago, it's a Panasonic. That's why uh, this US company has some saw business. For the ball, for the ball filter, it's just basically two uh, US companies, like Broadcom and the Kovo. They have like 95% market share. For PA, power, uh, power amplifier is three US companies, three Skyworks, Kovo, and Broadcom. This is three US companies. And then for uh, Switch and LNA, uh, there's two uh, US companies. So they are mostly dominated by US and uh, Japanese companies. Well, you may ask me, where are Chinese companies in this uh, landscape? There are actually many um, companies in China they have entered into the uh, RF uh, devices uh, market. But so far, they are still uh, pretty uh, small. But don't get discouraged by this uh, chart because uh, I actually see this as good opportunities for companies uh, in China. For example, there's one company in China uh, who makes um, LNA and uh, switches. And they went public last year in China and the stock price was at um, uh, 40 initially. Guess how much it is? Right now it's about 600. So it's up by 15 times. And they are making switch and LNA, this is like the smallest market, but they're doing so well. So what I'm saying, like, uh, this is a good opportunity. As long as we can make a good product in any of these areas, it's going to be very good uh, uh, market opportunities. I want to... Um, present this to show the uh, market status of other uh, important devices in the uh, RF system. So the first one is uh, base station, right? Base station, there are four major companies in the world. There's Huawei, like 30 something percent. There's Ericsson, there's Nokia, and there's ZTE. Samsung is also uh, catching up. So China is um, having um, I would say it's about, about um, close to 50% because Huawei is actually uh, increasing its shares worldwide. 
So I, I believe that the China, the total share is about close to, um, getting close to 50%. Uh, That's the, uh, the base station. For base band, for base band, we can see there Qualcomm has 50%, uh, right? And then there's a MediaTek. MediaTek we know is a Taiwan company, but uh, it's doing most of his business in China. So we can actually consider that a Chinese company. So there's a media, uh, media tech, 12%, there's Huawei, about 12%. Then there's the Unisoc. Unisoc is about uh, 5%. So overall is about uh, 30%, right? It's pretty good. And for transceivers, again, Qualcomm is about uh, 50%. The media tech is 14%, and then uh, the um, Huawei is like 10%. And it's still uh, pretty good. It's about 20% of the total uh, market share. So for base station, base band, and um, transceiver, this is a, I consider this is a very good uh, uh, status compared with uh, like the RF front end devices. Like here, it's almost zero, right? And for these uh, three uh, devices, it's uh, doing much uh, better. So this is the, uh, the overall status of the um, RF uh, uh, devices in the world and uh, in uh, China. And this table shows the um, processing technologies for each of the uh, RF uh, devices. So for baseband, and we know it's the uh, silicon based uh, uh, mainstream um, CMOS technology. And we know that Huawei and Apple, they're uh, using uh, five nanometer or seven nanometer processing technologies at the TSMC, right? But for RF uh, transceivers, it's also a CMOS um, technology. It's mostly in the ADC, uh, ADC and the DAC. For power amplifiers, we just uh, talked about, it used to be actually uh, CMOS, especially for 2G and the 3G, uh, it's uh, CMOS technology. Starting with uh, 4G, because the requirements for a higher power density and a higher frequency. So gamma arsenide, gamma arsenide has been the uh, main technology for 4G uh, amplifier, power amplifier. And we know that uh, for uh, 5G and uh, gamma nitride is becoming a very uh, important player, especially for uh, high power, uh, high efficiency uh, system, especially for the um, like base stations. So the GAN is gonna be the dominant uh, technology for uh, power uh, amplifier for 5G, especially for uh, uh, base stations. And then uh, there's a filter and the uh, duplexer. This filter technology, like normally uh, they're not semiconductor technologies. They are uh, more like uh, uh, MEMS technology. But as the um, geometry of the, um, of the devices shrink, it's uh, actually getting close to um, semiconductors. So that's why uh, many semiconductor companies are making, uh, start making the uh, filters. So the, um, before 4G, 4G and before that, everything is actually SAW. SAW is actually a very uh, mature uh, technology and it's been widely used uh, uh, as a uh, mainstream filter. And for, uh, for 5G, because of the higher frequency, SAW has its uh, uh, limitations. So we're gonna see a ball filter used for um, um, 5G uh, cell phones. In addition to that, there might be some um, market for um, LTCC and IPD and SMD, and I'll talk about that uh, later. For uh, LNA, it's mostly SOI, but uh, some people use uh, gamma arsenide uh, as in some special uh, cases. And same for uh, RF switch, it's uh, mostly SOI, but people are also using uh, gas p uh, in some cases. 
and MEMS is actually an emerging technology for uh, uh, switches. And we'll see uh, how it uh, goes uh, in terms of uh, commercialization. So this is what we have about the, the status of um, RF uh, devices. Next, I want to um, talk about the um, technology trend and the market opportunities in uh, 5G. Uh, these are the uh, three main major technology development trends in uh, uh, 5G. So the first one is going to be EMBB and the millimeter wave. Why? Because uh, in order to achieve the, um, the data rate from the uh, large bandwidth, and also in order to achieve a comprehensive coverage to have um, uh, many things connected on the network, we need to build another for base stations, many, many more uh, base stations in order to provide enough uh, uh, bandwidth and also enough uh, coverage. Why millimeter wave? And these people are, are saying that uh, uh, for 5G, even though right now we start with uh, sub six uh, gigahertz, that's the um, current uh, deployment for uh, 5G. But the the real thing, the real 5G will be actually um, millimeter wave because at uh, that frequency, just the the, um, the bandwidth will be much uh, um, more available. So we, we will have a uh, much larger bandwidth for high data rate. So um, people are saying that uh, if there's no minimum wave, there's no 5G. So, so the real thing, the real big advantage of uh, 5G is going to be in uh, millimeter wave uh, uh, frequency range. But there is a problem with uh, millimeter wave because the transmission uh, distance will be much shorter at a uh, high frequency much shorter transmission um, distance. What does it mean? It means that we're gonna have uh, a lot more, a larger number of uh, base stations in order to provide good coverage. So that means the number of uh, base stations will be dramatically uh, increased. So because the number of base stations will increase then, Everything goes into the RF devices. Hello? Hello? Oh, you're yeah. fine. I'm fine? Okay. Yeah, you continue, yeah. Okay. So just the number of devices that will go into the base station will increase dramatically. So that's why the, the, uh, uh, the market uh, opportunity is uh, big. The second development is called the uh, carrier aggregation. Carrier aggregation is to combine um, a few component carriers together in order to achieve the uh, desired bandwidth. Now for 4G, it's two CC. CC means component carriers. But for 5G, it's gonna be five CC or even more. So that means the um, number of the uh, RF devices, the filter and the switch and the PA, the uh, the number will increase um, greatly. That's why you see here that the market will will be uh, uh, increased um, greatly. This is the second uh, um, development, and the third one is uh, massive MIMO. It just says the uh, for the antenna the number of antenna will be increased um, uh, dramatically. Right now it's like eight for 4G. It's gonna be at least six four for sub six uh, gigahertz. And there's gonna be 128 for millimeter wave um, uh, base stations. And uh, even 192 um, antennas for one uh, base station. So the number of the devices actually, again, will uh, decrease uh, uh, hugely. So all this says that the number of the um, RF devices 
will increase uh, uh, dramatically. So this is a, a summary of the uh, technology options in 5G uh, communication. I only have power amplify and uh, and the filter here because these are either the um, most critical or the uh, largest market. So for um, they are actually very different for base stations and for mobile devices because the uh, the, the requirements are very uh, different. So the technology uh, is uh, different. So for base station, so for sub six uh, gigahertz. It's going to be LD mass. I think LD mass will gradually uh, decrease. Uh, it's going to be uh, gas. And also, as I said before, the uh, gallium nitride is going to be uh, increasingly used for uh, base station. For millimeter wave, uh, it's going to be a gas or uh, gallium nitride. For mobile device, as I said, it's already uh, gas. And um, for millimeter wave, Gas is going to continue to be a major technology, but people are also talking about using gallium nitride in cell phones. It, this really depends whether uh, we can make the gallium nitride devices on silicon substrates, because right now we are making the uh, uh, gallium nitride device on silicon carbide substrate. This is a small and uh, expensive. In order to make it to the cell phones, we have to make it cheap, right? We have to make the, uh, the, uh, the uh, chips very cheap. And also we have to make it on a large scale to meet the uh, uh, demand. So that means that we have to uh, be able to make the GAN device on large size silicon wafers to meet the um, requirement for cost and for uh, uh, quantity. For filter, um, the, for base station, like currently is actually mostly uh, metal cavity type of uh, filters. And it's going to uh, go in to ceramic dielectric filter for uh, smaller sizes and uh, also uh, better performance. And for uh, millimeter wave, it's uh, going to be ceramic, and the uh, LTCC uh, may be used for um, millimeter wave because uh, the um, the size is going to be a um, very important requirement. For mobile devices, devices the filter has been a star like for lower frequency, usually below uh, two point five gigahertz. If it's uh, more than two or two two and a half uh, gigahertz. Uh, it's going to be the uh, ball filter. That would be the main. Um, that would be the best technology for filter in uh, mobile devices. But uh, um, some companies, some phone companies, are also are using like LTCC, LPD as an option. I'll talk about this uh, in more details uh, later. But for millimeter wafer uh, range, the filters are actually going to be more challenged because um, the acoustic filter, the saw and the bore, uh, it's uh, reaching its uh, physical limit. It's, it won't work high, at high frequency. So it has to be some sort of uh, in actual uh, magnetic uh, filter. And also for uh, LTCC and, uh, and IPD might be an uh, option. Okay, this is, um, how power amplifiers is going to be uh, adopted in 5G base stations. It largely depends on the uh, development of the base stations and the antenna. If it's uh, like before, the base stations are so-called macro base stations, they are big ones, then everything will be uh, uh, gallium nitride. That's easy, right? because the gallium nitride is ideal for high power uh, applications. But now there's a trend, right? They, because of the millimeter wave, the base stations will have different configurations. There's going to be some macro base, uh, going to be large or macro base stations, but they will also, 
Also, some are smaller ones. Smaller ones, they will be like a macro cells and the pickle cells or even uh, femtocells. cells. In this case, the power level will be very different because for the small cells, we may not need a, a large power uh, power amplifier. So in that case, the in that case, so the gamma nitride may not be the best notion because the cost and the other concerns. So it depends on uh, the uh, how it uh, develops in terms of the um, cell phone, the the, um, the base stations. But overall, the trend is um, we're going to use more and more gamma nitride uh, in uh, in 5G for base stations, and the silicon based LD mass will be. Um, gradually decreasing. Um, I just want to show this um, as an example how the, uh, what is the filter technology in uh, 5G base stations. As I just said, it's going to be moving towards ceramic dielectric filter uh, technology for uh, 5G base stations. This just shows that uh, some um, examples, like on the right side, this is the uh, ceramic uh, filter and the resonator. So basically what you do, what we do is to experiment with different materials and uh, uh, different processing uh, technologies to achieve the desired dielectric constant of the material and also to get stable uh, temperature uh, stability and also like a high um, quantity factor of the filter. So it's just kind of an ex experimental study to find the material that will um, meet our requirements. <clears throat> I'm actually more uh, interested in the technologies for uh, mobile devices because um, for one thing, it's a, it's a larger uh, market and also uh, I, I believe it's actually more challenge to make them because uh, in addition to the device, you have to consider other um, requirements, especially the uh, requirements for small size and the requirements uh, for cost. So these are uh, uh, very stringent requirements to meet for mobile devices. So from um, 4G to 5G, we know that the number of each devices will at least double. So this is a very good thing. Just remember that uh, for 4G, we have about, we have about $12 of RF content in each of these uh, cell phones. So $12. And it will be increased to about $25 in each of our cell phones. This is actually a very big number. You think about like each phone you have $25 inside. So this is actually a big market. On the right side is the um, total market and also the annual growth rate for each of these uh, four uh, devices. Again, here it shows that the uh, filter is actually the uh, largest uh, market. And at the same time, it's gonna grow uh, the fastest. So next, I would like to just focus on the uh, um, filter, on the filter for uh, the um, 5G mobile devices. As we uh, mentioned, the, uh, for uh, mobile devices, the filter technology is called acoustic filters. Acoustic filters has two types. The first one is called the surf is saw, S A W saw, standing for surface acoustic wafer, and then the second type is called bulk, bulk acoustic wave. <laughs> the bulk has uh, again has uh, two types. The first one is called the uh, the cavity type. It's called F bar. F bar standing for film, vocal, acoustic resonate. And then uh, on the right side is actually the, uh, the other type is called SMR. It's called solidly mounted resonator. 
So instead of using cavity, it actually uses um, a stack of uh, materials with uh, different um, acoustic impedance. So that it actually reflects the um, acoustic wave back into the uh, piezo layer. The piezo layer here is actually the aluminum nitride is the piezo layer. And then at the uh, bottom and top is the uh, electro. So this is the, this is the uh, stack. It's the most important stack uh, to, for the uh, acoustic uh, bulk uh, filters. Uh, let's get him back to the saw by definition a propagates along the surface of the piezo electric material and uh, its uh, its wavelength is determined by the pitch of the idt idt stands for interdigital transducer transducer is to just to confer the energy between uh, between the acoustic energy and the uh, electrical um, energy. So it's determined by the uh, pitch. That means the it has a problem because the if it goes very more for higher frequency, there will be three issues. First, if it goes very more you need to use a, a DUV, uh, maybe a EUV lithography system to do the, uh, to make the geometry. If you do that, then the cost of manufacturing will increase because the no cost and the simple process, process is actually a big advantage for saw. If you go to a very high frequency, that advantage will be uh, uh, diminished. The second thing is, if it's a very small, and uh, if it, it, when the temperature changes, the material will expand, right? When it expands, the, the frequency, the frequency will also change. So that very important uh, performance indicator is called uh, the temperature coefficient of frequency that will become very large. That means your temperature change, then your friction will change. So it's not a reliable um, filter. So this is the second problem with uh, going to a high, high frequency. And then another one is uh, power handling, right? If, you, if your uh, pitch becomes very small, then the width of the, uh, the, uh, the metal will become very small. That means power handling power handling will be a problem because you cannot handle a high power um, signal. So that, that's why uh, there's a limitation for saw uh, going to uh, high frequency. So the ball, uh, by definition, the, uh, the wave, the acoustic wave is actually going inside the uh, uh, aluminum nitride uh, piezo layer. So the uh, frequency of this type of filter is determined by the thickness of this stack, the stack of uh, electrodes, two electrodes, and the uh, piezo layer. So the uh, so the, the um, um, this is the uh, frequency. So in this case, it has better temperature coefficient. It's going to be uh, uh, more stable because the expansion will be different. So that's why it's uh, more suitable for higher frequency, uh, it also has higher um, quality factor than the uh, saw filters. So the ball is actually a very good technology for, um, for filters. And this is the um, status, this is the market status of the saw and the ball filters. And we actually kind of see this, saw this before. This, the, uh, the, the market players are uh, for saw and bore. So one thing to note is that as we go into 5G, the share of the, um, the saw filter will decrease. And then the, the share of the bore filter will increase. 
At the same time, there is also uh, some um, room for so-called TC saw. TC saw is the temperature compensated saw to make it more stable in terms of uh, uh, temperature coefficient. But that means it's also going to be uh, more expensive because the, uh, the process will be more uh, difficult. And here it also says that the, um, the share of the um, bow SMR will increase. Because traditionally, like uh, even for bow, the, um, the, between these two types, the cavity type has better performance because the, uh, the, air, the air cavity at the interface, there is uh, almost 100% of refraction back to the uh, uh, PLD material. But on the right side for this, uh, this structure, the uh, refraction of the uh, uh, acoustic wave is not as good as the air. So that's why there is some uh, difference in terms of the uh, uh, performance of these uh, two types. But it's actually catching up. It's also a, a little bit cheaper to make the SMR filter. So the, um, there's, um, the market share will be uh, increased also. Okay. This is something very uh, kind of interesting because in addition to the saw and the ball, some companies are using LTCC, IPD, and SMD filters. What are these? These are just uh, like uh, um, the old type LC uh, filters. And the LTCC, IPD, and the SMD is just the, the method, the, uh, the processing technology to build the uh, IC uh, circuit. So the, the LTCC is the ceramic technology, is the ceramic process, and the IPD is semiconductor process. And the SMD is just kind of a packaging uh, solution. So this is basically, they're all basically the uh, LC filter. People are using this not because it's good, because it's a uh, cheap, because it's also easy to make. If there's no great product that's that's good in everything, people actually fall back to kind of the old type uh, uh, technology. <clears throat> um, so this is for sub six uh, gigahertz, and this is for millimeter wave. For medium B wave, it's actually more difficult because uh, currently there's not a good solution. So we'll have to develop a new technology for filtering in the uh, minimum wave uh, frequency. And to bring in something new, you have to be, uh, you have to meet a lot of requirements. Like uh, I listed here, there's, uh, this is the set of requirements that a new technology has to uh, meet. So for what will be the solution? For one thing, people will try to push the acoustic uh, technology to get higher and higher uh, frequency, right? For example, like people are uh, making FR, the, uh, the bow filter to like 10 giga and 20 giga uh, hertz, but um, still, even though you go to 20, it's still not millimeter wave for minimum wave frequency yet. And also that people use, try to use the NAM wave for, and it's uh, harmonicus to get high frequency. You just uh, like detect, you just use the harmonicus of the NAM waves to get higher frequency. That's one thing uh, people are trying to do. But I think the overall direction for minimum wave is to develop an EM filter to replace the uh, acoustic filter. And there are four uh, possible uh, technologies, like the dielectric wafer guide, and there's a cavity wafer guide, and there's on chip uh, integrated, and also there's the uh, planner syn film um, filter, or called the uh, uh, macro strip. This is a four possible uh, types of uh, new filters. I just want to show here uh, what is the problem with uh, the F bar at high frequency. If it goes to high frequency, it, the two charts 
uh, on the top shows uh, a high frequency, the thickness of the piezo layer, the thickness of the uh, electrodes will become very thin. It becomes like 10, 20 nanometers. Once it becomes very thin, it becomes very difficult to make, especially to control it. It becomes very difficult. And also, when it goes to high frequency, the Q factor of the filter will also be uh, very small. Like right now, it's, it's like a, a thousand, two thousand a Q factor. But you go to like 20 gigahertz and um, even higher, the Q factor is only like 100 something. If I can only get 100, 200, I can probably go with the old type of LC filter, right? So there's no need to uh, use this uh, complex technology to, to make a, a filter. That's why uh, we are actually hating the physical limit of the acoustic uh, filter. This shows the um, advantages or problems with the four possible uh, new filtering technologies. I have uh, four types here in terms of uh, frequency and insertion loss, uh, power handling, and size. Actually, they are all doing pretty good um, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, frequency and the insertion loss and the power handling. But the biggest problem with the uh, new technologies is the size. They're, right now, they're actually uh, too big to be used on a cell phone. Because uh, in 5G and the train is go uh, smaller and higher degree of integration. But if it's too big, then you can't just do it. It's, that's the problem with uh, the new uh, uh, filtering technology. I would say um, like the cavity waveguide and the planar film or max strip are promising. But a lot of efforts has to be uh, spent on miniaturization of these uh, filters. Okay, uh, this is a, a summary I have. It says uh, 5G is big. It's kind of a revolution in uh, information technology. And it will bring uh, enormous changes to our society. And uh, China is leading in the world in many areas, such as 5G technology and the uh, uh, deployment. But it's actually uh, weak in uh, IF devices, which is both a challenge and also an opportunity. And I believe that opportunities will uh, prevail. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Frank.